Hi, Yvonne. Thanks for having me. First off, I'm glad you got my memo with the wardrobe. Um, <laughs> Always <laughs> so, on a Friday uh, for the, some reason. Oh, green on a Friday. Isn't it fantastic? Indeed. Um, yeah, so the, these guys have gone off into space with SpaceX. Um, they've been doing a few, uh, some science experiments and being exposed to uh, probably higher radiation than the actual astronauts on the ISS. So there are a bunch of sort of science things going on there as well. But mostly it's actually as you said, four civilians that have been training for uh, five months to go up there. No professional astronauts, no NASA involvement. It's fully uh, it's fully civilian uh, run and paid for by Jared Isaacman, the, um, the entrepreneur. So who are they and how were they selected? So uh, Isaacman actually paid for the entire thing uh, in a charitable sort of donation, and it was about two hundred million dollars uh, that he organised with SpaceX to go up. Uh, and he and there was a a, a theme um, of a. The commander, so so uh, Jared Isaacman had to be the commander. There was a geoscientist called Sean Proctor, who acted as the pilot. Haley Arsenault, um, which was a she's a physician, <laughs> she's a physician's assistant. It's a long night for me. Uh, and there was data engineer Chris Ambrosky, who acted as the mission specialist. So they all had to actually train outside of their normal domestic civilian roles to perform these crucial roles in this mission. And they had. Um, the themes uh, of a um, commander, pilot, medical officer, and mission specialist. Um, and the very amazing thing about Haley, actually, and, she, and this is one of the first and one of the significant things, was she actually is the youngest American to go into orbit at 29 years old and the first with a prosthetic. So she actually has a, t a titanium leg because she suffered bone cancer as a child. Uh, and what Isaacman did is he, he, he bought these four seats, um, one for himself, and then he ran a whole bunch of competitions um, to give give them to people that, and to raise money for uh, the St Jude uh, Children's Research Hospital, which specialises in uh, researching childhood cancers and disease. Wow. Do you think it's really a case of anyone can be trained to travel to space if they can afford it or if someone pays for it? What's significant about this launch where space tourism is concerned if we're looking into the future here? Well, uh, look, um, it's a very difficult question about, I suppose, the philosophy behind all of this. You know, when we are like, I can't even go five kilometre outside my home at the moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, certainly, if you're, if this is really showing the difference between millionaires and billionaires. So uh, Isaac Men's a, a billionaire, and he can actually afford to go in orbit for three days. And I think a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about a couple of months ago, we we're talking about Bezos and Branson, and and they were sort of just going up into orbit and coming back down. But this is a much bigger undertaking. Three days in orbit um, in a little place, a thing that's just like a minivan really going around Earth with four people in it. Um, it's, as I said, higher than the ISS, so it's an enormous undertaking. Um, and in terms of the, the future of space tourism, uh, well, we know that as things become commercially viable, obviously uh, it's only available for the very rich initially. And then technology, engineering, um, demand catches up and we actually end up seeing these costs come down. And that in fact is what NASA and other space, um, space organizations are actually banking on. Uh, they no longer have to rely on the Russians uh, for 80 to 90 million US dollars to get up into um, orbit anymore. So they've got these private enterprises and they're kind of hoping, I think, that the commercialization of space and the space tourism side actually brings down the cost of putting up uh, other people in space for, for other things. Um, I think one of the most poignant things for me, uh, it kind of bridges the space tourism thing for me, is, um, and there's a lot of talk about this, is that the spacecraft was designed to orbit the Earth and not dock with the International Space Station. Uh, and so this specialised docking space on this spacecraft uh, was actually adapted to be the toilet. And instead of the specialised docking adapter, they've put this, what they call a cupola, which is basically a glass dome. So these four um, astronauts over the next three days, whenever they do need to go to the loo, are going to have the most amazing view while they do so. <laughs> So I guess they're paying, I don't know, how much do you think it will cost? I mean, it's all relative when we say costs are going to come down. A million, two million maybe? And how soon do you think that will be? 
Well, I know that I still won't have that uh, personally. <laughs> um, it's all very tight-lipped. So um, Isaac Men paid two hundred million um, US dollars for this, uh, but he said the actual seats were considerably less than that. So the two hundred million was raised for the hospital. Um, if you were looking at the Virgin Galactic Spaceship Two flights, yeah, um, they're sort of selling for about four hundred fifty thousand. Uh, Blue Origins is US dollars. Blue Origins New Shepard's about five hundred thousand. That goes a little bit higher, um, and that's only for fifteen minutes. Uh, Inspiration4, which is what we're talking about, 200 million, possibly less. Um, but NASA orbital trips, you know, if you, there's sort of talk of people going and staying on the ISS as tourists. You're looking at 60 million US dollars plus, wow. um, you know, which is still less than the 80 to 90 million US, uh, US, um, US dollars that the US were paying Russia, but it's still well and truly out of my ability to pay. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Let's move on to another milestone uh, which was hit this week, China's space program. Some of the astronauts have returned to Earth after a record three months up in the Tianhe space station. What did they achieve? Isn't it amazing? Uh, that's that's three months, and that is the longest time that any of the, the Chinese astronauts have spent up there. Um, it's absolutely incredible how fast China has advanced in this space race. Um, so Shenzhou 12 was in space three times longer than any previous crewed Chinese mission. Uh, and they touched down only about seven hours ago. Um, and they launched on June 16th. So that's a long, long time ago. They spent this time in this 16.6 .6 meter long core module. Uh, and the next mission um, that they're looking at doing is only gonna be a few days from now. They're actually looking at sending the next cargo spacecraft up. And then in mid-October, they're actually sending a crew for six months. So they are just jumping month to month and making huge bounds in, in their part of the space race. Well, definitely one to watch. And also this weekend as well, we'll be looking forward to those, uh, those civilians returning to Earth. Claire Kenyon, thanks so much for talking to us tonight. It was really fun. Thanks, Yvonne.